Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to look at the question, can you splice the number 8 pool bonding wire? We're going to dive deep into it, see what the codebook has to say about it. I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, ICM Controls. We'll learn a little bit more about them later. I want to take just a minute to remind you that if there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, so let's take a look at our scenario here. We have an above ground pool and we're getting ready to bond it very quickly and answer the question from today. If you've not seen my pool bonding 101 video, I highly recommend you check it out after this. So we're gonna start over here at our heater. We're gonna go from the pump, the pump to the frame, from the frame over here, we're gonna jump over and hit the fence. We're gonna come on around the pool. We're gonna do the ladder. We're gonna bond the water at that location. And then we're also going to bring it around. Now there are many different scenarios, but this is the one that we have in front of us. So now the question that we're asking today is, is this required to be one continuous wire? Is it allowed to be spliced? How would we splice it? Let's look at the code first. Now this is being paraphrased from the NEC. Definitely check your copy of the NEC to get the exact text. Components that are outlined in this section need to be interconnected utilizing copper conductors, which can be insulated, covered, or bare, but must not be less than eight. Here I've shortened the text. It says the method of connecting these bonded parts must adhere to the guidelines provided in section 250.8. The copper bonding conductors of the eight gauge or greater are used to decrease the voltage difference, the voltage gradients within the pool zone and it's not required to be linked back or extended to distant panel boards, service apparatuses, or electrodes. So there's a whole lot going on there, but what I want us to catch today is this part right here. And if you've not seen my video on the methods of connecting grounding and bonding conductors, highly recommend checking it out too. Because what this is saying is that when you are doing all this bonding, you can use any one of the methods that are listed there in 250.8. So let's explain what that means a little bit more. All right, y'all, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. It's ICM Controls. And specifically today, I want to look at the ICM 518, which is going to be our 240 volt whole home surge protective device. What I love about this device is it's rated for type one and type two whole home surge protection. It has an insanely high maximum surge current that it's able to take if you are listed. It's also NEMA type four X watertight enclosure. You can use this thing indoors or outdoors. It's absolutely bad to the bone. Highly recommend ICM controls. I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's get to it. Let's imagine just for a moment that this is your job site and you've done a rock star job, but let's pretend that you forgot this piece right here, that you forgot to jump from the shell over to the fence. The inspector comes out and he pops it on you. Before you did the job, you weren't sure if you were allowed to splice, so you literally took one piece of number eight and went from the heater to the pump to the shell and all the way around the pool and never spliced it one single time. And honestly, you're going to end up with a better job if you're able to do that, but it's not always practical. And in this case, the inspector popped you on the fence needing to be bonded. Thankfully, you're allowed to use a connector like this. Now, if you head back over to 680.7, it's going to lay out the, t the rules for these bonding fittings. And it, there it says bonding grounding terminals, but in my opinion, this applies to all the fittings. They must be made up of certain types of composition of metal, copper, stainless steel, or some of them that you're allowed to use. Also, they're going to need to be rated for direct burial, which is also going to in turn allow you to be rated for uh, concrete encasement as well at the same time. You also want to make sure that they are listed for the size wire that you're using because there are some that are smaller wires and some that are bigger wires. But let's imagine this is your job and you need to go from that part of that pool over to that fence. Let me show you how to do it. One way to do it is to take that unbroken loop that you originally started with, take you a split bolt connector like this, and go ahead and install it. Then what you're going to do is take you another piece of number eight and you're going to use it like a jumper. You're going to get that together, making sure that you've used the proper fitting in the proper area with the proper size wire. Then you're going to come across. You're going to get that thing tightened down. I like to leave them loose until I'm done, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. So when we take this 
and we swing that over. We're going to take and we're going to swing it over to the fence. And then I like to come back and tighten it after I'm all done because I'm going to have to bury it and stuff too. But you can actually use that jumper right there. And that is perfectly legal and the proper way that you would end up dealing with this scenario had you forgotten one. Now, in my opinion, it, the less splices that you use, the better, right? Do I use splices when I'm pool bonding? Absolutely, I do. It's just, you just need to do it. Just make sure that you're using one of the methods that are listed in 250.8 and try to keep it to a minimum because you could technically splice at every single one of these joints. But the problem with that is, is that every connection we have is another failure point, isn't it? So I really encourage you guys, take your time, use as much continuous wire as possible, but don't worry about it. If you do have to splice, it's completely okay as long as you follow everything in 680 and all of the methods that are listed in 250.8. Of course, always work with your local electrical inspector to make sure that you end up with a rock solid job. I am the electrical code coach and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.